Alrighty, good morning everybody, and uh, welcome to a special Kano Vintage Cube. Uh, today we'll be playing and testing out my recording setup on my uh, new computer, which was recently built. I'm very excited about it. And uh, one of the reasons that I wanted to get a new computer built is because my old one was horribly outdated and uh, we basically could not uh, stream or even record Moto. And now I don't have to restart the client, I can just play the game. Um, I think I'm going to start with Preordain here. Uh, maybe Bayou or Windswept Heath would be better. This is a new version of Vintage Cube. It literally came out, I think, uh, yesterday. I've not had the opportunity to play at all. I'm probably going to be pretty rusty, so hopefully this goes pretty decently. Looking at this, uh, I see a lot of good black cards. I see Imperial Seal, Beseech the Mirror, um, both of which I think are pretty good. I'm going to take the Preordain and try and cut blue for the moment. This is a pretty inoffensive card. You can play in a lot of strategies. Um, though generally it's correct to pick Fixing first. Um, so I see a, a Mystical Tutor. There's a Thought Season here. Lorien Revealed is very good. I do like Volcanic Island. Layla is also an incredible magic card. This card is like so messed up. Um, and so is Thalia. I... I think I want to take the Volcanic and hope to wheel Layla, Rona, Mystical Tutor, uh, Lorien, something in that that regard. Um, not sure how I feel about the other cards. Not a huge fan of the Trilands, uh, especially when a duel is available. And the Blue-Red Duel is pretty strong because they're both very strong colors in um, Vintage Cube. I really like Flooded Strand. Flooded Strand makes our mana way better. Um, there's also a Gush, Flame Slash, Lose Focus, Seal of Removal. Exploration's very good. Uh, I don't know if I want to play green. I also don't know what kind of blue-red deck I'm playing yet. Um, there's, you can play like a, a Controlly or a Tempo list. You can play, I think there's like Splinter Twin combo with Kiki. Um, there's also Storm, obviously. And if I can play Storm, I will play Storm, because that's how Kano rolls. But... Uh, we're going to take the Flooded Strand to make our mana better. There's a Force of Will. I do like Force of Will. Uh, Aetherflux Reservoir, Talisman of Creativity, another Talisman of Progress. It's probably not a Tribal Flames deck, but I'll take the free counter spell, and uh, we'll see how open blue remains. Chrome Host Seed Shark is very good with um, a spell like Force of Will. You just make a 5-mana uh, Incubate token for zero mana, which is great. Currency Converter is a card that I actually think is really strong as well, coming in on the one mana spot. It's very good because um, it gets you treasures and it gets you creatures and it's also just a cheap artifact. And in Vintage Cube, cheap artifacts are very strong. Uh, so maybe I take maybe I take Currency Converter here. I don't think, I don't think this is a deck I want to be playing Crucible in. I could take Archon if I wanted to do reanimation shenanigans. Um, taking artifacts opens up the ability to maybe do Tinker shenanigans, so I guess I'll take the Currency Converter. Uh, Echo of Eons is a very Storm card. Batter Skull is a Control card. Mox Opal. We have one artifact, although this is a very good Mox. So if, like, we open another Mox, it gets very good. There's an Echo of Eons, which is very tempting for me. Mm. I think I'm going to go with the Mox Opal. I think that's going to be the more more powerful card on average. So, like, if you were going to try and draft a Storm deck, Echo of Eons is very good, because it's effectively Time Twister out of the grave. But the one issue is, if you want to play the blue Storm deck in Vintage Cube, what you really want is Time Spiral as your draw seven, if you have no other options. And the reason that you want it is exactly High Tide. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Um... So if we want to play an artifact deck where we're um, hoping to get a tinker, we might want to take Brea's Apprentice or Cityscape Leveler. But a high tide that is this late into a pack has basically been around the whole table and nobody took it, which tells me that Storm might be available. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's let's try for it. We'll see if we can make it happen. Um, okay, so in this pack, there's Goblet Engineer which we can use to trash for treasure cards out of the grave. Uh, for small artifacts, it can be good for recycling certain artifact effects. Uh, Tameshi, Reality Architect. I know there's an infinite combo with this card. Um, I don't remember 
what it is. <laughs> uh, I don't even know if it's in this format. I will take Third Path Iconoclast, because it's good if we just go to, like into a blue-red spell spam tempo deck, but it's also good in the artifact deck, because it makes artifact creatures, and it's also good in Storm, because we'd be spamming spells there as well. Uh, Beseech the Mirror is also a very good Storm card. Uh, I think people have been playing this in Timeless, uh, just because it lets them get basically a free spell cast out of the deck, and with things like Dark Ritual, it gets very good. I know we're not in black, and this is a triple black card currently, but uh, it is the best card for Storm in this pack. Uh, I don't really like Creeping Tar Pit, because if we're going to be doing High Tide, we want as many islands as possible, so blue sources that are not islands are not great. Lightning Greaves could be very good if we get a Tinker, but there's no guarantee of that. Mystical Tutor came around, so did Thalia, uh, so I will be taking Mystical Tutor. Uh, Intuition or Gush? Intuition is really strong, because it lets you... Uh, get an effect you want if you have enough of an effect. So intuition, if you have like tendrils, brain freeze, and another storm wind condition, intuition just lets you grab your wind condition for three mana at instant speed, and it's blue. Uh, gush, however, is way more powerful, so I'm going to be taking gush. Aetherflux reservoir is a way to win, so I'll be taking aetherflux reservoir. Um, I guess I will take the green mana dork. We'll put that aside. Vile Smasher the Fierce. Um, sure. Sideboard. And Steel Seraph. Alright, that's a big artifact if we were to do artifacty shenanigans. Um, I apologize if you hear a cat meowing. She's not been introduced on the channel yet. We got her recently. But I have a very large, round white cat <laughs> named Ellie. And she is wonderful. Um, okay, let's see. So Demonic Tutor is very good. Troll of Khazad Doom would help a lot, especially if you got like an Underground Sea or a Watery Grave. Fiery Islet's not bad, but definitely not what I would pick first. And Manamorphos is incredibly good. It's good to see you, Porter. Glad to see you make an appearance. Um, I'm going to go with the Demonic Tutor. I think this is the most powerful card in this pack. Uh, there's also no guarantee that we're playing red. We could be playing Blue Black Storm, which is, I think, the more traditional Storm win condition. So... Okay, Mock Sapphire. Mock Sapphire is just incredible. So is the One Ring, Narset, Helm of Awakening, uh, Doomsday. All of these cards are incredible in our deck, but we have Mox Opal and we have Mox Sapphire. Uh, Library of Alexandria would also be very good for early card game or early card draw in a game. I will take Mox Sapphire. I think having the blue Mox is pretty nuts in this deck. Uh, Scalding Tarn. Scalding Tarn's very, very strong. Just any blue fetch and Storm is very good. Uh, Bloodstained Mire might actually be better in this particular deck because Bloodstained Mire can fetch Volcanic and potentially a Black Source if we need it for, like, Demonic Tutor. Um, I'd like to have Days if possible. There's almost 0% chance that this wheels. Um, I'm gonna go with the Scalding Tarn. Maybe taking Blood Bloodstained Mire was better, but... Um, you really, really, if you're playing a high tide deck, you really want your dual lands to be able to produce blue, and especially off of an island. So Scalding Tarn, I think generically is stronger, even if Blood Bloodstained Mire was better in this deck. Also, I, I did not try to force Storm. <laughs> I, I'm, uh, a lot of people yell at me like, Kano, you always force Storm, and it's like, yeah, well, sometimes the Storm life chooses me. And I think this is one of those times. So Thought Scour is just another um, another cantrip. We don't have any way to buy back stuff out of the grave yet because we didn't get Echo of Eons. Draw two cards, discard a card, create a 1-1 one, one colorless pilot creature token with... Okay. Um, so it's just a 4-mana 8-8 eight, eight vehicle with crew 8. Um, so our options are like Thought Scour or Pentad Prism. Pentad Prism is nice because it lets us store mana between turns. And it also will help turn on Mox Opal. So I think I'm going to go with Pentad Prism for this particular deck. Other reasonable picks would be like Collective Brutality. So we'll take Pentad Prism. Also apologies if there is a lot of noise because Porter just decided he wanted to chew on his deer antler, which he got for Christmas. Because we're doing a little bit of an early Christmas uh, this year. We've got a... Um, I will be driving to the East Coast. I'll be driving to Maryland over Christmas. Spend time in that area, which will be fun. It'll be a good time. So Snuff Out's decent removal, though we don't really have any uh, swamps yet. Dig Through Time. I'm not a huge fan of Dig Through Time in uh, Storm decks themselves. Like, it is fair as just like a cheap way to uh, modify your grave and then get 
like if you were to time twist or whatever, you can get a bunch of cards out of the deck you don't want to redraw. Um, it does get better with fetch lands, and like if we wheel thought scour, it also gets good. I think I would rather have Firebolt, though, because if you're going to play a Storm deck in Vintage, you need ways to kill creatures, because things like Thalia exist. You also need ways to... Um, I don't know if Thousand Year Storm is still in this. They've changed the cube quite a bit, because I'm, I'm seeing cards that I definitely don't ever remember seeing. Uh, so I don't know exactly what is in and what isn't. But uh, Coveted Jewel. Coveted Jewel is very, very strong. The... Um, the problem is, if you play it in a storm deck, your opponent is going to hit you, draw three cards as well, and then you are uh, you're a little bit toast. It's good because it can give a, a pretty strong mana refund, but I think it's better in a deck that's playing Tinker and doing more artifact shenanigans. Uh, Treachery is very good, however. Uh, Paradoxical Outcome. Oh, okay, we might need to take Tendrils here. So Paradoxical Outcome is incredibly strong especially when you have the zero mana artifacts that you can bounce with it. So like Mox Opal, Mox Sapphire make Paradoxical Outcome very good uh, because you just refund. The problem is it's better in a deck that wants to do uh, Upheaval. So the one of the other decks that is very common in Vintage Cube is to play Upheaval off of an insane amount of artifact mana. So you just float a bunch of mana, pick up all of your permanents, and then recast all of your mana rocks that are very broken. Paradoxical Outcome fits better in that deck than generally it does in Storm. And we don't really have a Storm win condition yet. Tendrils of Agony is way better than Aetherflux Reservoir in almost every situation. Uh, Virtue of Persistence I actually think is a pretty decent removal spell in this cube, though I haven't gotten to play with it yet. Um, I'm going to take Cabal Ritual, of course. Uh, we are moving much harder into Blue-Black Storm. It's an additional cost to pay this spell, pay X life, deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures. So Fire Covenant could just sweep the board, um, if we, and we will splash red almost certainly, because we have two cards that are very good in this deck. The question is, would I rather have Cryptic Command? And I think I would rather have Cryptic Command. Cryptic Command is a very good catch-all. Um, I am not I am not a player who's very good at picking Doomsday Piles, so I think I am going to go with the generic Helm of Awakening here. I'm happy to see this in the cube, because I don't think it's been in a cube for a very long time. Uh, it's not in any of the cubes I remember playing, anyway. But we'll take Helm of Awakening. Uh, Days or Memory Jar. So we don't have any draw sevens, so Memory Jar is probably the pick. But Days is very strong. Um, you can do a lot of things with Storm Counts. Like, you can actually Days your own spell to get a free Storm Count. Uh, if you haven't played a land yet, then you can replay the island you pick up, uh, so it can actually generate a mana. It's very, very good. So I think I'm going to take days because we don't really have a lot of uh, protection necessarily against opponent's interaction. Uh, Wrath of God. I guess I would take Overgrown Tomb here, <laughs> just to like maybe. I don't, I don't know if there's any green spells that we'd want to play. I know sometimes they do the two mana like buy back a spell out of the grave. I can't remember the name. Or recover. I think it is. No, one of those. Uh, we'll take Hard Evidence. Uh, Dryad versus Coveted Jewel. I guess we'll take Coveted Jewel. And Paradoxical Outcome Wield. So that's actually fantastic. Like, if we open up a Mox out of pack three, if we get, like, Mox Jet into, uh, like, somebody passing a Mox Diamond or something, Paradox Paradoxical Outcome becomes insanely good. Uh, so Talisman of Dominance is good. Candelabra. We're not really doing... I guess we are. We're doing High Tide things, but... Uh, turnabout is way stronger on average because Candelabra doesn't really do anything unless the lands you have are already tapping for multiple mana. Turnabout has the utility of like tapping your opponent's lands or tapping your opponent's creatures. Um, maybe the correct pick is to take Candelabra and try to wheel Turnabout because we have like Candelabra could theoretically see play in more decks. Um, Mightstone and Weakstone I wouldn't mind having because it's a kill spell or a draw spell. I wouldn't mind wheeling the Talismans out of this pack. Ancient Tomb is very good, uh, but we don't really have a lot of things that are Ancient Tombable. Uh, and we do have to be careful about our life total. Fatal Push is also a decent removal spell. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with Turnabout. I think the correct pick may have been Candelabra there, but we'll see. Reign of Filth. Until end of turn, lands you control gain Sacrifice This Land add Black. I don't think anybody is going to pick this card, but... If it wheels, I think I want it because it's just like a last ditch effort ritual. Like I've played, I've played a deck in Modern that played Mana Season, which is just a way worse version of this effect for like nine different reasons, and it was still decent. So like Reign of Filth, maybe 
I, I could actually see playing it in Vintage Cube. Blood Crypt does make our mana better because it lets Scalding Tarn fetch red. Or, or fetch uh, black, I mean. Excuse me. For the same reason that Bloodstained Mire would have been decent in this deck. Um, I like Snapcaster Mage a lot. Because just like flashing back a high tide or something quickly could be very good. Uh, we don't have any way to buy stuff back out of the grave. So I actually think Snapcaster Mage kind of goes up in priority a little bit. Which is unfortunate. Because we do need more more ways to fix our mana. Uh, Remand, Rite of Flame, Urborg. Talarian Academy is interesting. I don't think we have enough cheap artifacts for this to be the pick. Uh, we have no green spells that we want to be casting. I don't think I want Marsh Flats. Remand is very strong because you can just pick up a spell, like you can Tendrils, Remand, Tendrils, as an example. And then you get like two Storm Triggers, and it's very strong. Um, there's also Rite of Flame, which I'm hoping wheels. Yeah, we'll take the Remand. Uh, Charter Course is just cheap draw, which is good. Kappa Cannoneer, Improvise. Ward 4... When an artifact enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on it, and it can't be blocked this turn. That also seems decent with something like Paradoxical Outcome. Uh, Mishra's Workshop is generally very bad in a Storm deck. Arc Trail is okay. It's not really a Liliana deck, because we're not doing reanimation shenanigans, so like Putrid Imp Liliana is not really where we want to go. So I'll take Chart, of course. Okay, so Trinket Mage fetches Moxes in this deck, or Currency Converter, I guess. Badlands uh, just makes our mana better, but is not an island. Jace Wielder of Mysteries is interesting because Jace can uh, serve as a secondary win condition. But we don't really have, like, Brain Freeze or anything like that. Um, Emmercool is also another secondary win condition. We don't have any of the red spells that would let us cheat Emmercool into play. I think I take Badlands here. Trinket Mage is probably second pick, but... Okay, so we've got Brazen Borrower. We don't have green for Uro. Shinobi is decent. Uh, Jetmer's Garden doesn't fix for us. You do. When you attack, you may sacrifice another creature or artifact. If you do, make a 4-1 black skeleton creature token with Menace that's tapped and attacking. Interesting, but not really what we're doing here. I think we take Brazen Borrower. It's just really good um, interactive spell. We have no three drops, but it's effectively two spells in one. Oh, man. <laughs> the late Tinker. So Tinker's really good when you have multiple Moxes, um, but the problem is we would Tinker into Aetherflux Reservoir. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to end up taking Probe, because Probe is just free Storm Count, and the instant I pass this Tinker, there's going to be a Blightsteel Colossus in the ne next pack, and I'm going to go, why didn't I take the Tinker? Uh, the problem is, if I take the Tinker, there's not going to be a Blightsteel Colossus in the next pack, and I will have to Tinker into... Aetherflux Reservoir exclusively. So we'll just take the free storm count. Um, Odawara is decent. Contagion, you may pay one life and exile a black card rather than pay this spell's mana cost. Distribute two minus two minus one counters among one or two target creatures. So this is a free removal spell. Uh, the problem is we don't have any black spells we would want to pitch. Like none. We want all of these. So, I mean, we could take like Show and Tell. Problem is, like, every time I've cast Show and Tell, I have lost. Every single time I have cast Show and Tell, so I don't think we're going to do that. Okay, Candelabra came around, so we'll take Candelabra. Reign of Filth came around, so we'll take Reign of Filth. There's the cat. Um, she's standing between me and the camera. Oh, there you can see her tail. Uh, so we will take Urborg. Urborg helps fix our mana. Right of Flame. We're really not playing red, uh, so it's kind of difficult to justify. Putrid Imp in the side, I guess. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say about Brazen Borrower is Brazen Borrower makes things like uh, Charter Course much better because we actually have some odds that we would be attacking. Uh, I guess I will take Patchwork Automaton. Here, let me let me do the... the uh, there, now you can see her. Look at that. What's that? Look at that. <laughs> now she's mad. <laughs> she's like, how dare you remove my agency by picking me up? Uh, we just got forced an Ophiomancer, I think it was? Yes. Sorry. Sorry for the disruption. And final pick, Spelunking. All right, so we got 30 cards. There's a couple cuts we got to make. Let's see how we do. Um, Mox, Opal, and Sapphire. We might not actually run Opal, depending. Let's see, group creatures separately. What are we dealing with here? Okay, what is our worst spell? The problem is we, we only have the game plan of Storming, which is a little bit of an issue. 
Hard Evidence is decent because it can create a blocker versus aggressive decks. Um, it's also just a cheap spell, so easy storm count. Let's see, this creates a treasure if you discard a land and then put it into the grave. So that can ramp and fix. This is very important. It also creates tokens for Beseech, which is important. Um, if we want to run the Mox Opal, I effectively can cut zero of the artifacts because we need all of them. <laughs> um, we definitely need Firebolt as a way to kill things like Thalia. Although, whether we need to be running it in the main or not is questionable because we do have like Brazen Borrower. Although Firebolt can help with chipping damage by effectively being two storm count for Tendrils as far as the kill is concerned, because you can ping your opponent for two and then it's a storm count, but also it dealt two damage to your opponent's face, so it can accelerate just a little bit. I don't know how hard getting red mana is going to be. We have two fetches. We have one fetch and two red lands, it looks like. Although I don't really want to play bad lands, because it's not an island. Um... I think Paradoxical Outcome, because it's non-token, we gotta cut. Uh, because we only have two zero mana artifacts, and then, like, we would have to hit Pentad Prism, and then, like, buying back Pentad Prism is okay, but I think that's one of our worst spells here. We may also not want Cryptic, because we do have Remand and Days for protection. And Cryptic is a very expensive spell to have to keep up on your opponent's turn. We also have Force. Still need to cut two cards. Yeah, I'm guessing it's Firebolt. Iconoclast I will splash because Iconoclast um, can win us the game with just like 1-1 one, one aggro after casting a million spells. And then our other worst spell. I mean, it might be Reign of Filth, but Reign of Filth is also a ritual that produces black, which is very important. I mean, I don't know that we want to be sacrificing lands. I think I'm going to cut it, and then if we happen to struggle with producing black mana between treasures, land untaps, and um, like Pentad Prism, then I might bring it back in. So Mock Sapphire, we will definitely play as though it is a land. We will play, let's see, Volcanic Island, Scalding Tarn. We'll still play Badlands because Scalding Tarn can then fetch um, black. Uh, Flooded Strand for deck thinning, I guess. It is just like an island that replaces itself for Threshold for Cabal Ritual that's reasonable. Urborg. Mox Opal is only good if we have Mox Sapphire and at least one other artifact, which is not super likely. It does mana fix under those circumstances, and it is a zero-cost spell for something like Iconoclast, which does produce artifact tokens. I don't know if we can play it as a land or not, though, is the issue. I don't think we can. Um... And I'm going to leave Odawara in the sideboard. Why did you not add enough lands? Okay, let's see. We've got one, two, three red sources. One, two, three, four black sources just in our mana base. Okay, it's questionable. That looks like a Kano Storm deck. I'll see you guys in round one. All right, welcome to round one. Um, a lot of lands here. We have a turn one chart, of course, if we want it. Um, I don't think you can really mulligan if you're playing Storm, and this hand is reasonable, so I'm going to keep. There's a little bit of a problem if our opponent does something like Thoughtseize. We also don't really have any powerful card advantage. Like, we've got some tutors, but we didn't really pick up any draw sevens. So I think we need as many cards as we can get. And we kind of have to save these cards to um, actually storm off with, so it's going to get a little awkward. Opponent starts with a Rafine's Tower. I don't really want to draw any more land right now, so I'm going to fetch instead an island. Okay, Gush is a little heartening to see. Uh, we'll play another island. I don't think we're going to play Chart, of course. We're just going to bluff that we have, like, Counterspell. Mmm, Deep Cavern Bat. Okay. That is a little bit of a problem, because uh, I'm pretty sure they just take, like, Gush. <laughs> they could take Tendrils, uh, and then just see if we have a different way to win. They take Chart, of course. Reasonable. So this is where I regret taking Firebolt out of the deck. We have Turnabout. Um, yeah, I guess we just keep playing into High Tide. Hopefully they don't have a, uh, a Wasteland. Opponent untaps. 
I guess if they do have Wasteland, I have the option of casting Gush to protect Volcanic. Ancestral Recall. So opponent is playing a much better deck than we are. The cat is now on my office recliner. <laughs> okay, so opponent is going for the Thoughtseize. Oh gosh. I think they take Gush, right? But if we cast Gush, we're way behind. And then uh, we're just going to let them look at our hand. This sucks. Like, this is the type of deck you do not want to play against when you're playing Storm. Especially when you don't have the draw sevens to make up for the fact that your opponent is one for one in your cards. And your opponent having Ancestral Recall is... Well, it's a little more than unfortunate for you. Opponent attacks for one. They're going up to 19. We're down to 18. We untap. We draw another island. So I guess we're playing island. Yeah, we didn't even hit, like, Mind's Desire, so I think I just built a really bad deck. <laughs> Maybe I need to be playing Paradoxical Outcome. Oh, man. Because without Gush, without Chart, of course, we have almost no way to recoup card advantage. And Liliana, I think, is going to become impossible for us to beat. So... Uh, I guess we're dropping Turnabout. I could drop Tendrils. Not sure that's correct. Because um, then it's like, I have to get Snapcaster to to basically win, or I have to get Aetherflux Reservoir. Aetherflux Reservoir might be a way to win, but I'm not sure we can cast enough spells to um, make it matter. So we'll play a Swamp. Um, current plan is to Brazen Borrower at end step to get rid of Deep Cavern Bat, untap, attack Liliana with Brazen Borrower, then cast Chart, of course. <laughs> I mean, we can cast both halves of Brazen Borrower on opponent's end step anyway. Okay, opponent plays Baleful Strix to draw a card. Then they play an island. We really have to hope that they don't have some form of counter spell. All right, we're going to ditch the Mox, which hurts. But right now it's effectively just a land. Opponent pitched Grief. Oh, do they have like a way to exhume Grief? Oh, man. All right, well, we'll Petty Theft the Deep Cavern Bat. Yeah, that's correct. We'll, we'll Petty Theft the Deep Cavern Bat. Um, unfortunately, this does give them the option of just taking Charter Course again. <laughs> Which they probably do, because we can't actually cast Tendrils. Okay. So opponent is playing Mono Hand Hate the deck. Uh, and the way that Storm beats Mono Hand Hate is by storming faster than they can, they can normally beat you. Uh, the problem is, this is not a Storm deck that is capable of that. So I'm going to go ahead and concede. Because there's nothing we're drawing into at that stage that's going to work. Um, I guess this means I'm playing Coveted Jewel, which I'm I'm not a fan of. I also think that means we're playing Paradoxical Outcome. We could play Putrid Imp as a blocker. Uh, Firebolt's coming in. And what are we taking out? Treachery is sort of another way to win. Hard Evidence seems much worse than any of the spells we're playing now. Although Hard Evidence does produce a token for Mox Opal. So maybe I can't cut that. This is a very bad, very difficult matchup. <laughs> um, hmm. Turnabout might be our worst spell against them. Because, like, Daze, we can actually Daze important spells. Remand is a way we can win if we have mana and not card advantage. So we can't cut Remand. It is unlikely we will win the game with Reservoir, but it is our only backup if Tendrils gets exiled. Yeah, I guess we're dropping Turnabout. Uh, let's run 41, because we're bad at this game. All right. We'll play first. Let's see. Mystical Tutor. What does Mystical Tutor get in this situation? Like a high tide, I guess? We don't have black. We can't get Demonic Tutor, and then that's just... That wouldn't really do anything anyway. Mulligans don't get much better than this either is the problem. And our opponent showed, like, five different Thought Seize effects, or five different discard effects, anyway, between Grief... Thoughtseize, Liliana, Deep Cavern Bat. All right, we'll keep. I don't like it, but uh, we'll start with Flooded Strand. Pass the turn. You know, I've been trying to find ways to enjoy playing Magic again, and um, I realized that uh, there's a lot of reasons why I was not having fun playing Magic. Um, let's take a look while we are here. What other cards would be reasonable to Mystical Tutor for... I mean, we could get Force. We could get our win condition. I think we just wait, maybe. 
We don't have anything we can cast on the way up to develop our board. We might need to get Firebolt. So um, let's just wait. Okay, Daze is very good. So because I drew Daze, I think I'm going to play Candelabra. Because um, now if my opponent casts a two-cost spell, I don't like... I can daze it, um, and then I can still Mystical Tutor at my end step. Baleful Strix. Uh, that's not really a daze target. Okay. Opponent's passing. We draw another island, so we're going to play another island. We have Remand Daze available. Also, this is a sweet Candelabra art. I love this art so much. Uh, opponent plays a Rona. Um, I'm just going to remand that. Because we, we do need to draw some cards here. The problem is... Like, we can Mystical Tutor for High Tide, but it doesn't do a whole lot. I think we play a Swamp and cast Aether Flux Reservoir. We can still daze, potentially, like a, a 3 mana or a 4 mana threat, depending on whether or not opponent plays a land. And that will gain us some life. However... Yep, we are going to daze a Turok. Dread Canter. Yeah, I didn't draft enough card advantage. I should have taken that Echo of Eons early. We draw Beseech the Mirror, which is effectively useless. Do I want to Firebolt the Baleful Strix? I think the answer is yes. We could Mystical Tutor to gain two more life, which is somewhat tempting. Um, I'm not going to do that, though. I'm going to hold Mystical Tutor until I have as... Like, until I basically have to cast it. Okay. Opponent plays a Phyrexian Flesh Forger, which is pretty bad for us. Follows it up with Rona. So Rona... Rona will be a problem. <laughs> uh, we can Beseech the Mirror... If we, like, Mystical Tutor for Cabal Ritual, we could, like, Sack Candelabra, go cast something out of our deck. The problem is we don't have anything we can use to, like, reload. I think I'm casting Mystical Tutor for Gush. The problem is if my... So my opponent's going to flip Rona. Rona is going to be an issue. What other draw spells do we have? Chart, of course? <laughs> it's not great. The problem is I'm denying myself a draw by doing this. I mean, I still think I have to. Yep, I think we gotta do this. Okay, so we Mystical Tutor. We go up to 20. And our options are not great. I think the pick is Gush. The problem is if we draw nothing, Gush is very bad. We could take Demonic Tutor, but then we just go down on mana. We could take Cabal Ritual, which lets us filter to cast Beseech. We could sack Candelabra. But then what four mana or less spell can we cast that's impactful? And there's not really an answer to that. I guess we could cast Brazen Borrower to bounce Rona. Let's see. Cabal Ritual without Threshold gets us one extra mana. So we would go from five to six. And then we would Beseech using four of it, going to two. So we can't even cast the other half of Brazen Borrower to gain more life. I don't know what Miracle 2 cards I could hope for off of a Gush. But that might be the play. And having the extra lands in hand would... Um, sort of protect us from a flipped rona sort of not really yeah all right we'll take the gush so let's cast gush gain a life we have snapcaster um we have mox opal which is turned on here we have uh the problem is we don't have a way to get triple black no we do because we have candelabra no we can get to double black we can't get to triple black wait we can with mox opal Okay, so we would play an island, we would cast the Mox, gain life, storm count 2, black, black, filter, blue into black, then we can beseech, cast with bargain, sack candelabra, <laughs> Now we have seven cards. We can get Cabal Ritual. Cabal Ritual gives us five black mana. Then we could Snapcaster Beseech with Bargain again. And then maybe Tendrils kills our opponent? I haven't done the math all the way through. So we cast Cabal Ritual. Which 
gains us life. We get five black mana. Snapcaster, gain life. Uh, beseech the mirror. Cast with bargain and flashback. Sack Mox. Cast tendrils. Target our opponent. And then we can pay for Aetherflux Reservoir to kill our opponent. Woo! <laughs> oh, we got there. We so calculated it. Uh, we absolutely deserved it. <laughs> oh, that shouldn't happen. That should never happen. Um, okay. Uh, game three. I'm not sure what we change. Cryptic and Turnabout seem reasonable. Cryptic being able to bounce... Like a deep cavern bat could matter. Uh, fogging our opponent's creatures could matter. Counter draw could matter. Our opponent's not really fast. The problem is... I guess Cryptic does replace itself in 90% of scenarios. So like it's actually a card we need to be playing. The problem is what do we take out for Cryptic? <laughs> if we're going to do that. Is there anything that we can take out? Yeah, we don't have enough card advantage to really be playing this deck. That's, that's a major issue. I think I think I'm gonna I I don't th I think I'm gonna keep it as it was for game two. We are on the draw, which could be good and bad. We have a turn one currency converter, a turn two pented prism, two colors into some decent spells. I think this is keepable. Hopefully, our opponent didn't keep five pieces of discard. Well, they didn't start with black mana, which I suppose is good news for us. We'll start island currency converter. Uh, this way, what, if they make us exile or discard a land, we can uh, make treasures, which will also help us ramp. Baleful Strix, okay. It's not discard. Uh, they have eight cards in hand. They discard Blight Steel Colossus. That does not inspire confidence for me. Uh, so we play Volcanic Island into Pentad Prism. And pass the turn. If they have a way to destroy Pentad Prism, we can uh, loot in response, ditching a land. Um, if they have a way to destroy a land, we can gush to protect it. Opponent attacks for one. I go to 19. And they miss a land drop, ditching Triplicate Titan. That probably means they have Exhum, and they're just going to try and end the game. So we play an island... Pass the turn. Opponent plays a Swamp. And they exhume. Yep, so they get a 9-9. Nine, nine. That is not the worst thing for us they could have reanimated, but it is pretty good. Okay, let's go ahead and loot. Opponent is in the tank about our loot. I'm not sure what they could be considering here. Oh, treachery's hilarious. Um, now let's ditch an island. Um, I will actually exile this because that allows us to get a treasure next turn. Um, we have to use up either a treasure or a pentad prism charge to cast treachery this turn, which I think we will. So let's cast treachery. Okay, we can untap our lands. Uh, make a treasure. And then I think we just pass. Unfortunately, that is one of our big, like, possible storm count generators, but... Because it, it's a free spell that untaps our mana, so it's one of the ways we can possibly abuse high tide. Opponent is going to exile our triplicate titan. Um, and they paid two mana, which is going to allow us to draw a card. Yeah? Okay, that's fine. Okay, we draw Swamp. Opponent goes to combat, attacks us for one. We take one. Untap. We draw Paradoxical Outcome. Um, that could let us pick up Pentad Prism to filter mana, as well as a Currency Converter. We can also chart a course without attacking, ditching a Swamp to convert it into a treasure token. I'm not sure that I want to do that. Outcome is also an instant, so there is opportunity there for us to um, get some value out of it. 
what can I do if I want to storm this turn? We have up to three black mana if we want it. Outcome is basically just a bad divination. I think we play the swamp, and I think we chart a course. Because if we can make a treasure, if we like, if we can draw a island and ditch it to make a treasure, that's pretty good. Okay, days helps. I think at this point I have to ditch outcome. Yeah. Yeah, at this point I have to ditch outcome. So we'll ditch outcome. And the reason I'm doing that is because I like, like, days, snap days. Um, this gets me a rogue, which could matter for the purpose of bargaining, because then I don't have to bargain a treasure. Because, remember, bargain, you can sacrifice a token. Um, token, artifact, or enchantment. Token, comma, artifact, comma, or enchantment. Um, we do not have a way to deal with that, unfortunately. So I think we have to let our opponent take something. I think they take Beseech, because that's the most, like, wild card spell we have. It's just going to cast the best spell in our deck every time it's cast. Unfortunately, we can't Beseech into Tendrils, because we're holding both. Opponent takes Beseech. Okay. They know we have days, so they're going to have to play around days. Okay, they attack for one. We don't particularly care. Now, do I want to loot... I can either make a token or I can loot. And I think looting is better here because, yeah, if we hit a land, then we can make a treasure next turn. And we're going to struggle with both mana and cards. Okay, Flooded Strand is good, so we can play Flooded Strand. We can do some stuff here. Our opponent is representing some kind of counter magic. Um, so I think, I think what I'm going to do is, on my opponent's end step, I am going to fetch with Flooded Strand, get an island. I'm going to put Paradoxical Outcome into the grave. It's a four mana spell here. I'm leaving up double blue. And so they are going to go with Turok. Uh, they also are playing around double days. So I'm going to fetch with Flooded Strand. I'm going to go with the Paradoxical Outcome play here. We get a Rogue. Then we can Snapcaster Paradoxical Outcome. Cast Paradoxical Outcome, picking up these three permanents, which will draw us three cards. So basically my plan is to put as many cards in my hand as I can. <laughs> um, we can't storm at instant speed, unfortunately, but the odds that our opponent hits a relevant spell is a lot lower now. Oh, they hit two very relevant spells! Um, okay. They hit Demonic Tutor and Tendrils. Yeah, any order, I guess. And so now we have to try... We have to try to win very quickly. Which I think we can. Depending on what we draw off of, like, a Gush. And whether or not we hit, um... I was gonna say whether or not we hit High Tide first. Okay, let's start with a Probe. See what's going on. Shallow Grave, Thieving Skydiver, Mountain. We have a Firebolt, so we can get back Beseech. I think that means we win. I think. So, Badlands. Red, blue. Pentad Prism. Firebolt here. Get back Beseech. Um, gush with the two tapped islands. We get Remand. Uh, we need to get to 11 Storm. It might be a little difficult. So let's go black, 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 blue. Beseech the Mirror. Bargain away the Rogue token. Um, we're running out of time. Let's see, I think it's got to be Cabal Ritual. Cast Cabal Ritual. Um, let's go currency converter. Oh, I was holding priority. That's not what... <sighs> All right. Um, cast snapcaster mage, holding priority. Can I remand snapcaster? I cannot. Days snapcaster, pay one. Resolve snapcaster, hit 
Tendrils. Cast Tendrils on our opponent. Okay, so this takes our opponent to one, and then next turn we have to flashback Firebolt to win. Oh, I think we found it. I think we found the win. We just F6 this turn. Either they can deal with Firebolt or gain life. And I don't think they can because I think they played a Swamp. So they take Currency Converter. They can Shallow Grave a Deep Cavern Bat, which would gain them a life. But that doesn't save them from Firebolt. Okay, we untap. They Shallow Grave. Sure. They take Remand. We draw Preordain. Play an Island. Flashback Firebolt. Gotcha! <laughs> Alrighty, I'll see you guys in round two. Absolutely worth it. Alright, welcome to round two, everybody. Um, yeah, I, uh, I think this is a keep. It's not an amazing keep. But like I said, mulliganing would really hurt with this deck. There's not a lot we can do to undo our mulligans. Well, we are on the play, so let's start with a hard evidence. We really want that clue either to draw a card or to be there for Mox Opal. This might be the legendary Snapcaster hard evidence game. Okay, opponent leads on Bayou into a Thought Seize. Yeah, we'll daze, we'll daze the Thought Seize. It's not a great play, but... We don't want our opponent to know exactly what it is we're doing. Uh, replay the island, pass the turn. I'm not going to swing zero to send a message. Opponent plays a Xander's Lounge. We untap, we draw Remand. Uh, Remand's pretty good for us here. Uh, pass the turn. Opponent is going to cast a Talisman. I am going to Remand that. They are playing blue, but they don't strike me as a deck that's going to play a ton of interaction. Uh, Sheldock Isle typically is just a decent way to cheat something like Emrakul into play. So it kind of looks like they're five color good stuff. They could just be playing a bunch of land uh, lands like this for like Leyline Binding and also be Control, which would suck because that mean my previous read was very very far off. Um, play a Flooded Strand. Do I want a Snapcaster Hard Evidence? Oh, I don't know that I want to do that. That might be correct. Yeah, I guess I'm going to try. So we'll play Flooded Strand, we'll fetch for an island. Snapcaster, hard evidence. Uh, we don't need Volcanic, we're holding Badlands. Okay, pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They play Underground Sea. Minx and Boo. They one, one red hamster with haste. They sacrifice it and kill Snapcaster. Okay. So we untap. We draw Candelabra. So we play a Swamp and we pass the turn. Mm, do we want to play out Candelabra? I actually think we do. I think we want to play out Candelabra. I know it's... Uh, I, I think every bit of mana we're going to have is going to be important. And so, because we can sort of prepare for our next couple of turns this way, I think that's what we want to do. We're getting hemmed. Uh, that hurts a lot. Uh, nothing, nothing we can really do about that. Keep the Badlands, which is arguably the worst of the three cards in our hand. Opponent going to increase the size of Boo and attack us for four. No blocks. We go to 15. So we don't really have a reason to keep these clue tokens around now. I guess us snapcastering for uh, hard evidence was actually sort of a play around discard because we stored up some draws on board. Bona plays an Oko, Thief of Crowns, and does nothing with it. Okay. So let's draw a card. Untap. We draw a third path Iconoclast. Um, hmm. Draw another card. Brazen Borrower. Uh, that could matter. I think we play out the Urborg. Because it doesn't really fix our opponent's mana. They have Quadra Black already. Um, and if they do have a Wasteland or something, then at the very least, um, they hit effectively a Swamp for us. 
Okay, opponent already had Boo, so they can't create another one. Our other option was just like running out a naked Iconoclast, which would be better against Hand Hate. However, um, we would prefer to be able to play Iconoclast when we have spells to back it up. Opponent is going to Animate Dead Snapcaster Mage. Okay. All right, so they get Snapcaster Mage. We could Brazen Borrower Snapcaster to put it in our hand, but it's probably hitting him to Turok. Mm, is that what we want to be doing? We either cast the front half of Brazen Borrower, lose the rest of our hand, cast the back half of Brazen Borrower, bounce Snapcaster, lose all but one card, or bounce... Yeah, I think we got to bounce Snapcaster, actually. I think that's the best bet for us. Because this way, if we keep Snapcaster, we could maybe flash back something that matters. Because, like, now if we draw, I don't know, uh, Aetherflux, or not Aetherflux, the Bargain Tutor, Beseech the Mirror, maybe that works. Not sure. We'll take seven. Go to eight. Untap, we draw an island. We have no interaction that will save us. Um, and Snapcaster, yeah, okay. I was, I was trying to see if we could, like, Snapcaster remand against Borrower and then Disperse to deal with the token, but we, we really can't, can we? Are we just dead to this token? I think we are, because they can make it a 10-10, and then we would have to Flash Snapcaster triple block <laughs> in order to not die to a trampling hamster. This is why Hand Hate is extremely good in Vintage Cube, by the way. Because, like, if your deck is doing anything... Um, oh, no, we're dead to the food token, aren't we? <laughs> uh, well, they didn't uptick Minsk. All right. So, Flash in Snapcaster. Target Remand. Opponent is paying life and bitter triumphing a token. Okay... We still have two blockers, so we block here, block here, take four, go to four. Yeah, I think our opponent just missed lethal. Oh wait, no, they can sack, they can sack uh, Boo, and for some reason they can fling him directly at us. Okay. Yep. All right. Opponent got me. All right. Same, same deal as before. We definitely want Firebolt. We definitely want Outcome. Um, this actually seems like a deck where we want Cryptic against it, because they're a little bit, like, slower mid-range, perhaps. So, what do we take out versus them? Candelabra is, like, only good with, uh, Mox. I also think I want the Coveted Jewel, because we need a way to draw cards. Like, we just have to have the way to draw cards in the deck. Um, they know we have Days, so Days gets a lot worse, although it is the whole free storm count thing. What do we take out? Maybe I can't play Cryptic Command. I don't know, I keep wanting it, but I, I can't see what it's better than here is the problem. This is a very fragile Storm deck. Um, and I guess I'm taking out Turnabout again. Right, let's play first. Um, this hand is fairly decent, so we'll keep. We get to start with a Probe, which lets us plan. Normally you want to save it for a Storm turn, but against a deck like our opponent's, um, it can help us sequence our plays, and that information is very valuable. Like, people thought... It, it was really interesting when Probe got banned in Modern, because people were like, why would they ever ban that card? It doesn't really do anything. And it's like, no, it actually, like... You can have the win early, but Probe lets you know if you can go for it. So, like, it still skews in favor of... Um, opponent kept one land, Oliphant, Hallbreacher, Grizzlebrand, Demonic Tutor, Through the Breach... Interesting. We draw Coveted Jewel. So, I think we Island Preordain? Yeah, I think we Preordain here. Because if we get Days, Days becomes very good against, uh, like, a, a naked Demonic Tutor here. Um, Pentad Prism. Pentad Prism lets us turn on Mox. Brazen Borrower deals with Olaf or deals with a, a fast Grizzlebrand off of, like, Through the Breach or something. We really need Counter Magic, though, for this Hull Breacher. Although it's worse against us because we don't have any draw sevens, I guess. 
Um, I think I need to draw the Pentad Prism. Okay, because we're going to have to end up casting Coveted Jewel. That's just something that's going to have to happen. Opponent leads on Bloodstain Mire. They're going to wait for our end step to cycle Oliphant for a mountain. They have... they can fetch the Tri-Land so that they have... They're fetching and shocking and playing a Boldarian Epicure. Okay, so they almost certainly have Tinker based on what we've seen. I don't know if we've actually seen Tinker or not. I can't remember. Um, so we play a Swamp. Play Pentad Prism. We cannot get to Coveted Jewel next turn, unfortunately. If I had played Currency Converter and drawn the Pentad Prism, then we could have. Um, do I play Currency Converter now? Mm, I don't think so. All right, let's just pass. If our opponent hits a um, him to Turok, we're probably just dead. Like 100%. Because we need just about every single card in our hand right now. Did they draw Reanimate? That would also be terrible for us. Like, if they can just ditch Grizzlebrand and then reanimate Grizzlebrand? Actually, they ditch Hullbreach or reanimate Hullbreach or we're also screwed. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's so horrible for us. Oh, man. I'm so happy to play Vintage Cube again. I love playing Vintage Cube. Um, just all the different kinds of things you can do. And you can play with the strongest cards in Magic. And every game and every league is different. Uh, part of the reason that... One of the major reasons that I stopped playing Modern and got so burnt out on Magic, besides the sheer volume of, of Magic I was playing, was because all of the games were effectively the same for me. Because my opponent was always playing the same decks, like the same two or three decks, and every time you play against those decks, they do the same thing. Um, and the it, it really caused me to lose interest. And so... All right, opponent plays a Rot Farm, so they pick up Blood Crypt. This is another time where Wasteland would be amazing. And we had the option to pick it, but I can't remember what I took over it. Um, so we play Swamp. We play Currency Converter. We play Mox Opal. And then, do I, like, Snap Preordain? I actually think I do. Because if we can hit a Daze, it could matter a lot. Um, if they had, like, Corpse Dance as their reanimation spell or, uh, Necromancy. Uh, Remand also would be pretty brutal, though we'd have to expend our Pentad Prism charges for it. Uh, if they attack, because we're planning on casting a Coveted Jewel, I think I actually will trade, depending on what happens. So let's cast Preordain, see what we can find. High Tide and an Island. Well, High Tide is mana neutral, but it's not really what we want here. So I'm gonna bottom both of these. Okay, Treachery is great. As long as we don't discard Treachery, if our opponent plays something incredibly absurd, we can just steal it. Like, if they play Grizzlebrand, we steal Grizzlebrand, as long as we don't die to Grizzlebrand. And then we draw a whole bunch of, uh, whole bunch of cards. Mmm. Yeah, that's a thought seize. Okay. You got a thought seize, opponent. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they take Treachery. Because, <laughs> like, Coveted Jewel... Coveted Jewel represents a possible um, a possible way for us to reload. If they take if they take Coveted Jewel, that means they have an answer for Treachery or a way to play around Treachery. If they take Treachery, we at least draw some cards, and we get a we get a Rogue token out of it too. I actually don't think this is an easy pick for our opponent because they kind of have had an awkward sequence. Um, okay, they take Treachery. So now they can play their Blood Crypt and Demonic Tutor. Or their Dark Slick Shores and Demonic Tutor. Okay. So we know they're holding Hull Breacher, Through the Breach, Oliphant, Blood Crypt, and then whatever they tutored for. Which is theoretically a reanimation spell for Grizzlebrand. That is what they tutored for, almost certainly. So it's probably Animate Dead. So let's... Get a rogue, untap, draw Helm of Awakening, which turns Coveted Jewel into a five mana card. So we play Badlands. Um, I think as bad as it is for us, we do play Helm of Awakening. And then we play five mana for the jewel. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So we can cast Beseech with Bargain 
We don't have any hand disruption, as far as I know. What could we actually get, though? We could stop our opponent from getting coveted, Joel. <laughs> Although we'd almost certainly uh, ditch the Pentad Prism here. We could get... What could we cast for free that would be good? I don't think we have any way to exile cards out of the grave. We don't have any huge high-impact spells. Treachery's already gone. We already have Storm Count 2. I think I'm going to go for it. I just... I don't think this is correct. <laughs> so... Let's get rid of the Rogue token. And we're going to cast Outcome and just pick up all of our Dawnland permanents. So our opponent can't get Coveted Jewel. And then maybe we draw, like, Force, I guess. We drew days. <laughs> this is, uh, this could be a lot better. Let's replay Opal, so we discard one less card. High Tide is awful in this hand. Uh, so let's ditch an Island, a Flooded Strand. Uh, Remand does nothing for us here. High Tide. Still have to discard two more cards. Pentad Prism is just mana neutral, it's just storm count, and it doesn't synergize with Helm of Awakening, which will be better overall. We need Snapcaster, and I guess... I guess if we're dazing to maybe stop a Necromancy or something, then we're probably getting rid of Volcanic here. Problem is, they have three mana already, and they definitely went and got Animate Dead. Does that change what we keep? I'm not sure it does. Alright, ditch the Volcanic. Okay. We got Opponent. If we could have cast Currency Converter, if this had been Mox Sapphire, we would have been a lot better spot. So that's the other card we didn't know. That must be the card they just drew. They play Hull Breacher. And they play Blood Crypt Tapped. So they do not go for the reanimate. So now the issue is, any cards we draw are gonna hurt. So Coveted Jewel. Maybe I should have gotten rid of Coveted Jewel. We untap and draw Mystical Tutor. Um, that does not help. So we play Helm of Awakening, play Currency Converter for free, it turns on Mox Opal, then we Cabal Ritual, uh, Snapcaster costs one blue, and then Beseech costs three black. So that's four mana total, leaving us with uh, three mana left, no blue. So let's Demonic Tutor first, see if we can get anything else that's gonna matter here uh the we could get mox sapphire for an extra storm count we don't have to get very high to win with uh beseech which is good and we're not drawing any extra cards because hull breacher um we don't want tendrils because we're gonna beseech for tendrils so i guess and gush doesn't do anything yeah i guess we just get the mox then cast the mox snapcaster Target Beseech the Mirror, cast with Flashback and Bargain, Sack Opal, Tendrils for Victory? I hope I didn't miscount. Okay, cool. We got there. Just barely, but we got there. Um, yeah, run it back, I guess. I don't, I don't know what else. I don't know what else to do here. This deck is very hard for me to sideboard with. And I'm, I know I'm, uh, it's, I'm pretty rusty. I've not played for a long time, so... Not played Vintage Cube for a long time. So I don't, I don't know exactly what's good. I've been playing a lot of... Um, I played a lot of Ixal Unlimited. I think I have ele like 11 trophies now. Uh, Ixal Unlimited was very fun for me. And I've been... Um, my, my local card shop actually recently started carrying Magic. It was a, a card shop that was only playing... That was only handling Pokemon product uh, for a while. And uh, I told him, I was like, you know, I, I play a lot of Magic. Are you ever going to do that? And he's like, yeah, I've been actually looking to get into that. And so I've been helping him set up and running tournaments for him. So like Friday Night Magics, I'll run, I'll run for him. And so we started playing. I've started playing Limited there. It's actually been a lot of fun. So uh, I guess this is probably like a Mystical Tutor for Paradoxical Outcome hand. This hand's not amazing. But I mean, if my opponent goes for like an all-in play, we have force, and then we just are drawing cards, <laughs> like naturally, to maybe try and win the game somehow. All right, um, I will start preordain. Uh, we don't need these lands. We draw tendrils. Okay, pass the turn. 
Opponent untaps. They shock a blood crypt, go to 18, and they play Demonic Tutor. Um, I'm not going to force Demonic Tutor. Although maybe I should. There's an argument for having done that. Uh, we'll play an island. Playing Helm feels like suicide, but we have to have it on board. Uh, Mox, I'm going to hold in hand because it doesn't do anything on board, and it is a storm count, which will matter with this deck. We now have the option of force pitching Brazen Borrower, which is not great. Hull Breacher. Uh, we can just put that back in their hand with Brazen Borrower. Yeah, I think we're going to have to do that. Play that, tap land. Okay. So we untap, we draw Gush, play an island, pass the turn. The problem is Hull Breacher has Flash, because it's an insane magic card. Yeah, I mean, let's hope our opponent, I guess, does other stuff during their main phase. And then can't flash Hull Breacher back, back in. That's, that's not an amazing game plan, really. Um, Voldaren Epicure, okay. So they get a blood token. We take one, we go to 19. This could be a Tinker. Okay, Talisman. They are ditching Itali. And they are going to animate dead Itali. Well, if that resolves, we are toast. So we can't hard cast this, unfortunately. If we had one more mana, we could. If this was a mock Sapphire, we could just hard cast. Uh, we have to get rid of Tutor. Because our opponent did all of this pre-combat, we can Brazen Borrower here. I'm not sure we can do this on our turn, because the mana is going to be really constrained. Although it is only one mana. Yeah, I think we have to Petty Theft now, which sucks a lot. We can flash this in. That, that's free, because otherwise that mana was going to be on spent. Coveted Jewel does not really do anything for us, unfortunately. I don't think. Actually, it might. So let's Gush. We get an Urborg. We also draw a Remand. Um, unfortunately, we did not get to where we can actually cast Coveted Jewel. We can play a land and go to five, four mana, but we don't have double black for Tendrils, and we don't have a way to use mana for Mox Opal, unfortunately. And we've got to play the Island, because we need to be able to Remand. Yeah, that costs five. Oh. This is not looking good for us at all. Uh, we'll hit our opponent for three, and pass the turn. And we do have to Remand Hull Breacher. <laughs> <laughs> There's just no other way. But it plays Volcanic. Yep. We get Third Path Iconoclast, which we can't cast. They just replay Hall Breacher. Uh huh. They hit us for one. Alright, we untap. We draw a Scalding Tarn. So play Scalding Tarn, fetch with Scalding Tarn, get a Volcanic Island. Play Iconoclast. Attack for three. Maybe we can aggro them out and just use Tendrils as like a, a silly burn spell to win. We are running very low on clock because I am playing very slowly. Um, I'm not... I, it's been a while since I've streamed anything or, or, you know, actually talked out loud what I was doing. I really do want to get back into doing this. Wow, okay. That, just the double. That sucks. Uh, did I leave Firebolt in the side? I hope not. No, Firebolt's in the main. That is an out. Minx and Boo will kill us very quickly. Mm, yeah. Like, our, our draws have to be like Firebolt and then some insane storm spell. No, actually, we're dead to the hamster right now. Um, Because they can hit us for eight. We can gain four. Oh, hang on. Are we dead? If we could draw off Coveted Jewel, we might not be. Problem is, this just makes three treasures for our opponent. Hull Breacher's so messed up, man. Then we Tendrils, we gain six, we go to 14. Problem is, our opponent draws three cards. We take eight, and they could fling for four more, so we'd be at two. Um, opponent plays a Mox. 
And then Oko to turn the treasure token into an elk. We're just dead. Yep. Because then they can fling and then we, we take lethal. All right, I'll see you guys in uh, in round three. All right, welcome to round three. Um, I mean, we've got two moxes. I guess we keep. We will need some other stuff to actually storm, though. So we're going to lead on islands because we are playing high tide. No reason to run out the other moxes that I know of. Hmm, Swamp Mana Crypt. Maybe, maybe Mana Crypt will get us a little help this game. Opponent plays Turok, no kicker. We draw Beseech, so play another island, pass the turn. All right, Mana Crypt, we're going to need some assistance from the other side. Yeah. <laughs> every time I play Mana Crypt, I lose every single coin flip. <laughs> like it's, I have lost to this card more than I have won by it, I'm almost certain. Oh, Ninjutsu? Oh no, Fallen Shinobi is like this deck's worst weakness. Oh, they hit Snapcaster Mage and Remand. Oh, oh, that's so bad. The problem with Fallen Shinobi is it's going to kill us very fast. Um, can I do anything about this? I'm not certain I can. And our opponent is about to make us discard two spells. Um, oh, I needed to play Urborg if I was going to play Beseech. I think I'm just going to concede. Uh, I, I don't actually think we can come back from that. I know that's a really early concession, but I would rather my opponent not know anything else that's going on in my deck. So we want those three cards. Um, I'm probably getting rid of Turnabout. And I think Candelabra. And maybe if I get rid of those two things, I should just be getting rid of High Tide. Because other than that, I only have Treachery to untap my lands. Uh, we'll run 41 again. Let's just try this. I'd like to play first. Uh, it's a turn one Pentad Prism off of a Mox, or a turn one Third Path Iconoclast off of a Mox, which is very good. Or it's a turn two Iconoclast into a Mox. I think we play. I think we play the Iconoclast turn one. I think that is our best bet. Opponent could play scared of like a Daze or a Force, especially if we start Volcanic Island. Okay, that's a pretty decent opener. We had not we have not had a good hand with Mox Acceleration yet. Thoughtseize. Paradoxical outcome, almost certainly what they're gonna take here. They could take Pentad Prism, which would deny us a token and also makes outcome worse. So that's what they did. We untap and we draw Snapcaster. Snapcaster doesn't really help, unfortunately. Uh, get in for two, take him to 16, pass the turn. Opponent plays a Swamp into a Mana Crypt. This is Turok. Urtai Resurrected. Destroy another target creature or Planeswalker if they want. And then we would draw a card. All right, well, we at least get to draw a card. So now the question is, do we flash in a 3-1 and go aggro? I think we do. And I think we do simply because our opponent has Mana Crypt. So like Remand would be a very good draw here, or Days, but we didn't get it. So let's play Badlands, um, attack for three. We have Par Paradoxical Outcome can actually protect our board. All right, Mana Crypt, we need some help from the other side. <sighs> Opponent wins another, another flip. It's 25% chance you win two flips. Opponent pre-combat charts a course, ditching Triplicate Titan. If they have Animate dead, we need to Paradoxical Outcome draw two cards effectively, because we need to hit Remand. Creature gains haste. Okay, so we take nine. This is fine. Unless they have a way to sacrifice it, this is fine, because they're not going to get the tokens. Okay, so they get, it gets exiled. We untap. Daze. Daze is very good. Let's get in for three. Opponent goes to 10. Come on, Mana Crypt, we need your help to win this race. 12.5% chance that you win three flips. Oh my gosh. Opponent attacks for three, we go to five. Oh, it's Ninjutsu! Um, can I do anything with this? 
You can't daze in the ninjutsu. Oh, man. They hit Mox, Opal, and Preordain. Both of which are very good for them. Man, if they if they have a Mox or they have another cheap artifact, like even if they play Jite, like Opal just giving them mana is very good. I mean, if they play Jite, we're absolutely toast, but for different reasons. <laughs> okay. Mind twist us for one. Uh, I will daze this. And then I either have to cast Snapcaster and try and be aggro or have a blocker or cast Paradoxical Outcome and draw one card. Actually, I could draw two because I could put I could put Shinobi back in their hand with the uh, Brazen Borrower. Oh, uh, I don't like it, but I think I actually have to do that. So let's draw two cards with our really bad Divination. Uh, we draw an island, play Volcanic, play Mox. I could kill it with Snapcaster Firebolt, but I'm not going to do that. Um, uh, we need... Oh, we need some help from... We need some help from Mana Crypt! <laughs> Alright, come on, Mana Crypt! Alright. Urtai Resurrected. They're countering their Mana Crypt trigger to draw a card. Alright, well at least we don't have to deal with Urtai. As an interactive spell. Um, I think we're going to need the flashback off Snapcaster. I really do. So we untap. We draw an island. Play an island. Firebolt. Okay, it works. Pass the turn. We're going to have to rely on flashing in Brazen Borrower. Mana Crypt! Finally! <laughs> Finally! On the fourth flip that actually happens, they take damage. So they're hard casting Fallen Shinobi. That's fine. Opponent's passing. A Brazen Borrower. We untap. We draw Beseech the Mirror. Uh, I think that lets us win, actually. So we go to combat. We attack for three in the air. Okay. Opponent goes to four. Play an island. Cabal Ritual. Snapcaster, Cabal Ritual. Not how I wanted to tap for that, but... Uh, Bargain Beseech the Mirror? Cast Tendrils? Tendrils you? We got him, alright. We will not be swapping up the sideboard for game three. Alright, round three, here we go. Um, this is a turn one Demonic Tutor... Probably for an island. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not the worst hand we could have. Uh, I think we'll keep... Uh, it'll be Volcanic Island we Demonic Tutor for too because we want to be able to Firebolt a creature. And that will matter because our opponent is playing a ninja that kills us instantly if it connects. Opponent did Mulligan to 6, which is probably a good sign for us. If they were throwing away a bad 7, which it kind of looks like they were. Um... So play the land to play around Daze. Uh, we will Demonic Tutor. If they Daze the Demonic Tutor, they'll be pretty far behind. We get a Volcanic, pass the turn. We do have Force if our opponent kept like an insane reanimation hand or something. And we draw Treachery. So play Volcanic. I really didn't want, I, I really don't want to play out Volcanic here. I, I wish I'd drawn an Island because I want to be able to gush, but I also want to protect Volcanic from a, oh gosh. Um sacrifice it unless you pay its romantic cost by two yeah we're we're gonna force this and i think we pitch snapcaster because if they pitch if they throw a triplicate titan we just die because they hit us for nine then they sack it, it becomes three tokens that we can't deal with and then we die <laughs> we die to those uh show and tell uh hope this works no <laughs> doesn't work! No! It doesn't work! <laughs> We're dying to Emrakul. Uh, I don't see a way out. Uh, we can't put it back in their hand. We're gonna lose all of our permanents. We can't gush. <laughs> oh, we're just dead to Emrakul. Oh, I love Vintage Cube. GG, opponent.
GG. And a 50 play points for us. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed um, a special Vintage Cube Christmas episode. And uh, I want to I want to start making content again. I don't know at what pace I'm going to make content. It is not going to be daily. There's just no way I can keep up with that pace. Um, so uh, realistically, it's going to be like one, maybe two videos a week. Hopefully, I can... Um, when I get back into it, hopefully I can uh, put a lot more time and effort into the quality of those videos. Uh, I don't really have a lot else for you at this time, and I'm not going to commit hard to anything. Um, I'm going to be out of town for at least a week, so uh, this, this is going to be the only video for a little bit. But hopefully, um, hopefully I can keep having fun, because uh, Vintage Cube was fun, and Magic is fun. I just... Uh, Hope it's fun for me, and I hope it's fun for you guys watching. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this content, please uh, like the video, le uh, subscribe to the channel, because it doesn't cost you anything, and it supports uh, supports the channel. Um, and you can always unsubscribe later if you don't like what you see. See you later. Bye!